Perfect. So I'm here with uh, Clifton Mitchell in the One Nation Boxing Gym in Derby. Um, thank you for letting me interview you today. Um, so I've got. So we've gone over a few, a few things already off camera. But my first thing is, what made you first walk into a boxing gym? All those, all those years ago. Um, I think I've told this story a few times, but <clears throat> I'll go back. Before I walked into a boxing gym, I had a, uh, I was probably about nine, ten, something like that, and uh, it was all in the park, it was summer, so it definitely wasn't a crisp, it wasn't Christmas where people got presents, so it must have been somebody who got out for Christmas or the birthday, but there was loads of us on the park, somebody had a pair of boxing gloves, so everybody made a circle, one glove each. Some will stand there watching. And that was my calling that day. Yeah. That's how I see it because they're just going, you go, you go. And I'm going, no, 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 I don't do it. No, do it. Oh, okay, jump on the go. So I put the glove on. And then um, Colin Cousins, the kid's name is, and I, I'll, I'll never forget him because he was on my pals anyway. But in there, and he's throwing shots. He wasn't my friend there, I just knew him. Bosh, bosh. They're going, you're going to hit him back, you know. So I went, bosh, bosh, bosh. Punched him up, yeah, with one hand, and I could see where his gums were bleeding, his lips were bleeding, yeah. So I took the glove off, ran home, sat on the settee, like, I'm thinking the police are going to come and get me, you know what I mean? There's only about nine or ten. So that was my very, very, very first experience of boxing. And then I went back on the park the next day, and they was going, oh, yeah, yeah, he can box, he can box. And so there's another big lot this time, he wanted to have a go. I said, no, 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 I ain't doing it again, forget that. So I had another gun, done the same thing again. And then that was it. So that was my real first experience of boxing. And I think I went to the Merlin Amateur Boxing Club, which was the, the equivalent probably to this club now, back in probably uh, late 70s. And uh, went there for a bit, didn't really learn anything. It was not really, I just went there. Yeah. Then stopped. Started again when I was about 14, I'd say. 14, 15. So I already had a little taste of it. And then went to a different club, starting again. That was the Arboretum Boxing Club. So that's where it really started. Yes. And what, what, how old were you when you went to the Ingle Gym as well? And, uh, about 25. Oh, so, it was, so, so, so there was a big, there was mm -hmm. a big gap there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically I had, um, when I was 14, 15, I was wearing 14 stone. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I wasn't like a fat, I wasn't a fat kid. I'll show you pictures, I was just a, big, heavy boned, heavy set kid. And uh, quite tall for my age as well. Mm. So, regarding amateur boxing, it was something I could I could do it. I could just not, I could just box. Mm. And it wasn't something I had to try very hard at doing, to be fair. Yeah. I could just do it, so. And being a heavyweight, or a super heavyweight, there wasn't a lot of competition. Really, once you got to a certain level, nobody would box you unless you was in the ABA, say, and where they had no choice. So I'd probably only box in the ABA <laughs> all season, and then just box in one championships and then box till I lost, and then go and play American football. That's what I used to do. Okay. So. so, and then so so going back then, you went to you went to the first gym, and you said like it wasn't, you just didn't enjoy it there. Like no, you, you think so when there's no guidance there. No, it was the I was too part. young. I was too young. Yeah. There's more interested in people that were fighting rather than just a little, little black kid in the gym. That's not really doing a lot, really. Yeah. And, then, and then it took it took you a while to find that gym where you kind of found. No, no, no it didn't really tell me a while. Just my mates started boxing. A kid called Kurt Gibbons, Mark Gibbons, uh, Patrick Peters, Wesley Johnson, Peter Reed, uh, and me. That was that was the five of us. No. That was all going to the gym, which is the Arboretum, it was the barracks, which is now a showcase. Okay. Um, and that's how we all started together, really. And uh, it was Kirk that really started there. But I used to go to, me and Kirk, Kirk used to sit there, junior school, we used to sit there, I used to sit here. Right. In two days, you know, that was cool, yeah. So that's how long, we always knew each other. So they started, then we started again. That's how, okay. that's really when it started, properly. Okay. Know? And then, and then, so you had your professional career. Yeah. Was, and I think this is something you were talking about on the From the Corner episode, you never, 
you never kind of aimed to be a, a, uh, what well, you said upstairs. You, you're not a trainer; you're a teacher. Yeah. You never, you never aimed to to, to teach boxing after your career, but you you called it. You said it. You said it was. Um, you said it'd be selfish if you didn't pass on the knowledge. Yeah. So, what, do you do you have to be self incredibly selfless to to be a boxing trainer? Or do you think do you think there's no point? Do you think if you're not doing it, do you think? I think if you're doing it for money you're going to really, really not enjoy this job. Mm. Money is secondary. I'm more into trying to get kids or men and women, girls and boys, to improve themselves. The mistakes I make, I don't want them to make, from one. Number two, not everybody that comes in this gym is going to be a boxer. And not everybody is going to win more than, than lose. But if, if they can come here and be a part of something, that's positive. And be a better person and have respect and learn life and social skills social skills because that's what basically I learned up in Sheffield yeah. you know I want this to be more of a university of boxing rather than say just a boxing deal where people train go home we don't see them again my my plea to myself or what did I say my um, mission statement is the word yeah. is to um, make sure that there's a lot of one parents families out there and a lot of kids that don't have nothing stable but and if they come here, it's always going to be open. You understand? They know that the gym's going to be open, so they've got somewhere to go. That's what, that's what Karen said downstairs when I first come in. He was like, I, "My session wasn't even booked in today. I just walked in, and you you were here, and you and you took him on this." And then it, I think you kind of regretted coming in, coming in again because you said because yeah, his words were he killed me today. So, but no, no, that, that's yeah. what is that is that one thing that kind of you everyone talks about Brendan Ingle and like kind of what they what he meant to everyone yeah. but is that is that kind of one thing that you've I've talk, continu I've talk, continued from I've done from better outside the ring than I did inside the ring yeah yeah uh, my got my career got sh cut short through yeah. injuries yeah. but I will say to you that Brendan Ingram for me wasn't say the best trainer for me per se okay understand yeah I think those trainers probably could have done a better job for me but the education I don't think anybody else could have given me. If you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, Brendan's a a kid that likes. I'm, I was an aggressive fighter, and Ninga Way is not really that aggressive, is it? Mm. So mm. you can understand why I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not that I don't think I don't rate him as a trainer. I do rate him. I rate him very, very highly. Probably mm. one of the best trainers that Britain's ever produced. Mm. Um, definitely a Hall of Fame trainer for me. Yeah. Um, so. I'm taking nothing away from, but what I learned life and social skills on how to deal with people and how to conduct yourself in business. Um, people might think I'm arrogant, ignorant, which I am. I am, yeah. but I'm not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you speak, if if I'm in the right, I'm in the right, and if I think you've done me wrong, I will definitely speak my mind. I'm not a type of person that's going to hold back, and there's no filter to me. Yeah. You know, if uh -huh. it if it's shit, it's shit. Isn't it. You know yeah. what I mean? And if I don't believe it, I'll tell you. Yeah, is that is that so? That that's one thing you've kind of prided yourself on, kind of bringing that, just being honest with. Yeah, people think I'm can. horrible. I don't care, no. really. I really don't care because the people that I do care about me know me. I'm not like that. Exactly. So yeah. you can't be friends to everybody. True. Understand? Because yeah. you're lying to yourself, then, aren't you? Yeah. And if everybody's your mate, that means you're fake. Really? So you you said you said you've got you've kind of you've done you've had more success um, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a trainer as a teacher than you have you have. Well, I've I've I've, I've trained trained fighters to win titles. I never won any, so that will tell you. But is, that's but, what I mean. That. But is, is, that, is that is that not that's still a success for you, right? Well, whilst yeah, no, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. I do class. That's what I'm saying. I had more yeah. success out the ring than I have in the ring. Yeah, understand? I don't mean that if. If somebody wins a world title, that means, look at Cord Cordwell, Cord Dave Cordwell didn't win shit, but he's had world champions. Yeah, champions. And, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So he knows that, you know, he didn't get to the top of the mountain in the ring, but he has as a trainer, you know? Yeah. What, what is the most important thing when, when you're training a fighter? What's the, what's the one thing that, between a fighter and a trainer relationship, what's the most important thing for that to be successful? Trust. Trust. No other word. Got to yeah. trust. If I'm telling you something and you don't trust or believe what I'm saying, mm. you should not be 
your trainer or the fighter should not be with you. Do you, th do you think there's a lot of situations where, take Brendan Ingle, Ingle for example, he's such a successful trainer and it's a kind of an honour to be trained by Brendan Ingle that they kind of stay there because, because I of think, that? I think, I think I'll tell you what happens. I'll tell you what happens. This is what happens in gyms, yeah? And this is what happens where in football teams, not only, not only gyms, probably football, football, yeah? Where you've got a star in the team. Fighters that ain't going to leave that gym because of that star. Mm. That's there. Some will. Yeah. Understand? Mm. Some will stay because, oh yeah, yeah, because you know, he's on there, yeah. I'm, I'll train in the same gym as Brendan, or Naz, or I'll train in the same gym as Johnny, or the same as I'm with Dylan, or I'm with any of the top fighters. Pe fighters will stay there just because of that reason. Just to be associated with them. Oh, we can go to that fight because Dylan's fighting, that type of thing. You know? Where with me, I left Brenda and then came back. Okay. You understand? Yeah. But, because, listen, you know, the boxing, the boxing seems completely different from when I was boxing. Hmm. Now the fighters seem to have a little, a lot, a lot more control than when we were fighting. Okay. How, how so? I mean, regarding like the promoters were fully in charge. Okay. Now, the fighters are of their own entity. Does it, does it, does it depend, who, does it depend who, who the fighter is in regards to that? Yeah, well, yeah. if you've got to do numbers, if you're doing numbers, yeah. if you're doing numbers, it's all about numbers, isn't it? That's yeah, why they're going to look at numbers. If you do numbers, you can, you can, you can write your own checks, understand? Yeah. If you're doing proper numbers. I think Canelo doesn't need a promoter, does he? No. The promoter needs Canelo. Yeah, true, you know? true. So he's saying, why, why you do it? I can do it, I can go to the uh, TV and do it myself. These TV companies. Yeah. Okay. So, but then it's, it then goes the other way when, let's say, a fighter's kind of coming off of a loss. They they need the promoter to give them. Not necessarily. The Not necessarily. If you if you think Canelo needs a, you come off a loss. You think he need, really needs a promoter? No. Once you get to that level, like a Joshua, a Tyson, that level. That's a, that that is that's the elite level. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. <coughs> Even Dylan was promoting his own shows. With the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He owned yeah. some of the show. Didn't yeah. He? yeah. So. You know, when you get to when you're doing certain numbers, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. So the the trust is there, so that that trust has to go, kind of both ways. Of it course, can't, it can't. It can't be. It can't be one sided. Listen, Sandy lost. Sandy Ryan lost over there against Farris, yeah? yeah. And uh, how many tweets run? They go and get rid of your trainer. He's not this. He's not that. But like I said, the the, the fighters that get rid of the trainers, yeah have to look at themselves first. Yeah. Now if the trainer's not there and he's not done the job, all fair and done, yeah? And if he's not giving the right information or he's not reading the fight right, that's one thing. The other thing is, have you done it right? As the fighter being honest to themselves and done everything right? Because once you walk out of that gym, that's down to you. In the gym, you can do all the work you like. It's when you leave the gym, can you be trusted? Yeah. You know, taking responsibility. For you've your, got to your take own. your own responsibility for yourself. But if you know it's you that didn't do them runs, you that kept eating crap food, or it's you that didn't get enough sleep, if you out shagging load of birds at night, or not going to bed at the right time, eating the wrong foods, doing this, um, and that. You can do you can do absolutely everything perfect and still lose. Yeah, I think I think I think that's what kind of happened when when Joshua first lost to Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Everyone was everyone was I think it got to that point despite the fact Joshua was undefeated before that fight. Everyone was calling for him to leave Rob McCracken. <laughs> he then beats beats Ruiz again uh, and then goes goes into Pulev. Everything's on the up. No one says anything about the trainer. Goes into the Usyk fight and then it's the same cycle again. But to be fair, a trainer knows when. It's going. Yeah. Yeah, trainer knows. If trainer doesn't see it, then he's absolutely an idiot. He's not the trainer that... If a trainer can't see someone's going to leave, yeah, then something's wrong. So, so, do you, so, you, so you, you've, you've trained fighters then who you kind of know it's coming, it's coming to the end, yeah? Yeah, of course. How does that, how does that feel when I... Be when I sorry, because because you, the trainer knows, don't you? You're not getting the same vibes. There's just a little bit of a mood about it, and there's and there's fighters that you think, oh, they'll never they'll never come through, and they're fighters, the one they're the most loyalist. You know what I mean? 
do, do you, how does it, how does it feel when a when a fighter leaves leaves the gym, or does it depend on? Dep- the it, it all depends on the circumstances. Okay. okay. Does I got a, I got a, rid of a very high um, one with like hundred million Instagram followers. The fighter said, "Those are my gym." I wrote him a letter and I didn't want him anymore. And that probably hurt him more than if he had said to me, I'm leaving. Mm. I got rid of him. Yeah. Understand? So if I can't work if I can't work with you, then crack on. Understand? It's your career because this is like football managers. <laughs> Isn't it? How quick you do a really good job one week and next week you're sacked. Yeah. You know? So like I said, how's it feel? Well, it's life, innit? It's only boxing. Yeah. At the end of the day. So the yeah. might, if the leave if the leave for the right reasons, you know we can shake hands, boom boom, no problem, crack up. You know what I mean? With, with that situation where where you where you said no, we, I'm like I don't want you in the gym. That was because it wasn't benefiting like kind of the vibe of the gym in that way. It was, it was if, bringing if, it down if, more than uplifting. If um, if if they think they know better than me and they think that they define my boxing gym. The sadly mistaken, but because there's no soap star is bigger than the soap itself. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. One nation that you don't define one nation. One nation is its own brand. Yeah. Understand? So I don't think that I need you. I don't need you. Understand? Yeah. You need me more than I need you. Yeah. As in, I'm not saying that I'm not blowing my own trumpet in the slightest. I'm just yeah. like, but I know my worth. Yeah. Understand? You know your worth. You know. Yeah. What, you and know what and I'm not. I'm not for sale. Yeah. I'm not for sale. So you can't think. Oh, I'm giving you a few quid. Shut up. No, mate. See you later. But yeah. jog on. Understand? Yeah. You, yeah, you can you can live without. Yeah. That in the gym, hundred percent. Um, like I said, within 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 three four months, yeah, of somebody retiring, nobody talks about them again. I'll be around a lot, lot, lot longer, God willing, life spares, yeah, yeah. Uh, than most of the fighters. Yeah. You understand? And, and also, where, where you said you're a teacher as well, I feel like. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to interview you as well. What's the one thing that you think you've taught people um, to carry on in their lives? Be yourself. Yeah. Just be yourself. My mum always said to me, if you want to be different, be yourself. Yeah. Good statement, isn't it? It's a great statement. Yeah, just be yourself. There's no use in trying to dress it up and coming out with these long, long ass fucking um, statements where, you <laughs> where you're going to recite something. Just be yourself. And then, and then, and then you're not lying to anybody, are you? No. No. In the from the corner episode with um, Pascal Collins, Joe McNally, and Ben mm-hmm. Davidson as well, you mm-hmm. you talked about expressing yourself in the right way to to your fighter. Is it? Have you? Is is anyone kind of ever come in the gym to kind of? You hear about fighters going from gym to gym trying to find their place, trying to find mm-hmm. the right environment. Is there? Is there ever been a case where like a fighter's come in, you've expressed yourself in a way, and they've gone? Oh, They've kind of like yeah, of course, yeah, of course, of course. But if they, if they can't, you have to be yourself. You know, if you don't pretend to be one thing, and then listen, the only time you pretend to be something you're not is when you meet a bird and you're trying to pretend you show him your nice side. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's two sides. Every, every, same same with the women. Eh? They do the same, don't they? My miss is really good. She, if she'd have met the, the, the Clifton now, she probably would have married me. You know what I mean? But but I'm just saying. Uh, if you, listen, that means straight away you're not going to like jello, are you? No. Understand? Not everybody comes in here likes me. True. I don't care, but you're coming to me, I'm not coming to you. I don't beg you, come to your house, knock your door, say come to my gym. My name's full. Yeah. <laughs> Knows what I'm saying to you? So, like I said, I've kicked out kids out of my gym. I don't need it. Dominic Ingalls is no different. Understand? They'll kick him out. There's loads of fighters. Peter's hanging out no idiots around him. If you're wasting time, you're not serious about what you're doing, don't come. Yeah, understand. Yeah. I think that I don't. I'm not. I'm just. I'm too old to be. I don't even want to speak to people. To be fair, that's what I'm like. But like I said, I'm not ignorant. Well, I am actually. I am quite ignorant sometimes. Depends on. Depends who, on you. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to be ignorant. Yeah. But does that there's that stage? You said yourself. You kind of know when a fight is leaving. But does it ever come? Down? There's a stage when the relationship's torn. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Is it ever been? Is there, has there ever been a situation where it's kind of been, uh, you, you, you think you've expressed yourself in the right way, you think the fight is thing, and then it's gone down to fight night, and um, it kind of nothing, it doesn't, it doesn't click, or is it, or is it, is it always that happened beforehand? Are you trying to say, let me, let me explain it to you then. So what you're saying is that you've explained yourself about a fight, about a fight, mm. 
this is how it's all I want you yeah. to do it, but get in the ring and nothing works. Yeah, exactly. Well, that can be down to the opponent's better than what you thought he was, or you, your fighter, has just not had the races. Okay. You know? Yeah. Or you go in there expecting this is going to be a really, really hard fight, and they go and turn him over, and you think, whoa, that was a result. Yeah. Well, you can go in there and box a kid that ain't, that everybody says really good, and you go in there and you lose the fight, but really you get you really should have won it yeah. you know what i mean yeah so so it's um so it, there's multiple factors going it's not yes. it's not it's not, it's not just it's not just that you fall out with somebody understand yeah. you, me i like to go in the ring quite quite um aggressive so mm. if i fall out with the attention it'd probably help me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, yeah yeah but no i'm saying to you come fight night um it's got to be a trust. It's got to be one. It's one movement. Everybody going together in the same direction. Anybody veering off shouldn't be around. You can't. Have, you, there's no time in this game for, for people for, for, for messes, time wasters. No. Understand? This is this is the hurt game. You can legally kill somebody and get away with it. Mm. Understand? So yeah. it's it's really it's really a serious serious game. This. That's the reason why you got to train hard and take this as serious as possible. People are throwing punches. Yeah. Trying to trying to maim it. You know what I mean? Why do we do it? Because we love it. Yeah. Understand? We love it. Uh, to be fair, Chris, I think I've gone through most of my most of my questions. Um mm -hmm. and you kind of gone off thing. But my last question, what does the One Nation boxing gym mean to you? Everything. Everything? I I think that's yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best way to end. That's it. Thank you. Perfect. Good speaking to you. Thanks, Clifton. Nice one, mate.